Lord, we thank you for this time. We thank you for bringing us into this place. We thank you for every heart that you've drawn into, to, into this place. So, Lord, we pray that you will bless your word. Lord, we pray that it would go out on good soil. And, Lord, that you would reap a harvest and that lives will be changed and transformed and delivered and people will be saved and our situations will be spoken into. God, we, we need a word from you. So we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, our title for today, we're going to be talking about great expectations. Everybody say great expectations. That might bring back some bad memories from those who had to read it in junior high. Do you guys remember that? Charles Dickens. Good old Pip. Remember Pip? All right, yeah, bad, yeah. But we all have expectations. How many of you are expecting something from God? You're waiting on something. Something you've been like, Lord, where you at? Like, I, you, we, we have these expectations of God. And that's what we're going to talk about today. I have a little story I want to share with you. Um, it's a, a very interesting story. So it says, um, a fellow was stuck on his rooftop in a flood. He was praying to God for help. Soon a man in a rowboat came by, and a fellow shouted to the man on the roof, hey, jump in, I can save you. The stranded fellow shouted back, no, it's okay, I'm praying to God, he's gonna save me. So the rowboat went on. Then a motorboat came by. The fellow on the motorboat shouted, hey, jump in, I can save you. To this, the stranded man said, hey, uh, no thanks. I'm praying to God. He's going to save me. I have faith. So the motorboat went on. Then a helicopter came by, and a pilot shouted down, hey, grab the rope. I'll lift you up to safety. To this, the stranded man again replied, no thanks. I'm praying for God. He's going to save me. I have faith. So the helicopter helicopter reluctantly flew away. Soon the water rose above the, above the rooftop and the man drowned. He went to heaven and when he finally got a chance to discuss this whole situation with God, at this, at, you know, at this point he proclaimed, you know, God, I had faith in you. You didn't save me. You let me drown and I don't understand why. To this, God replied, I sent you a rowboat, I sent you a motorboat, and a helicopter. What more did you expect? What more did you expect? So today we're talking about our expectations. What are you expecting from God? What are you counting on God to do in your life? Um, I want to especially focus on a man. We're going to talk about a man named John. So if you could kind of turn to Matthew 11. It should be on the screen in a little bit. Matthew 11, 1 through 6. We're going to talk about a man named John. This is a man who had great expectations. Ooh, that makes a noise. Yeah. A man who had great expectations. All right, everybody there, if you have your Bible handy, um, we're going to go ahead and read it. It's on the screen. It says, when Jesus had finished instructing his 12 disciples, he went on from there to teach and preach in their cities. Come on, Jesus, you got to teach and preach. Um, verse 2, now when John heard in prison about the deeds of the Christ, he sent word by his disciples and said to them, are you the one who is to come or shall we look for another? And Jesus answered them, go tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight and the lame walk. Lepers are cleansed and the deaf hear and the dead are raised up and the poor have good news preached to them. And blessed is the one who is not offended by me. May the Lord bless his word. Let's talk about this man named John. I got to get you a little history on John. John was a very incredible man, right? He had a miraculous conception. If you guys remember, you're going to have to do a little backstory on your own. Go ahead and read the book of Luke. He had a miraculous conception. His mom, his dad, they couldn't conceive. They were old. You guys remember the story? And the, um, the angel appears to the dad in the temple, and he said, you're going to have a son. He's like, we're too old. And so the angel, like, made him mute. He could not talk 
until the baby was born. You guys, you guys with me? Yeah. Okay. Now, and also, in his, in, when he was in his mother's womb, he leaped for joy when he heard the sound of Mary's voice. So, like, he was already filled with the Holy Ghost as a baby. We're talking about John. John was pretty incredible. Okay, fun fact. John was also Jesus' cousin. Fun fact about John. Mary and Elizabeth were cousins. So, John and Jesus were related, right? Um, he also, he lived, he lived a life solely dedicated dedicated to ministry like this man was serious like pastor mike already talked last week he had his little camel uh robe on he ate locusts he was in a wilderness out in the hot sun by himself he was like serious he didn't even like you know go to the city for a break and come back out to the like he was all about ministry right he was um given one of the greatest responsibilities in the new testament and that was to prepare the hearts of the people to receive the Messiah. We're talking about John. John was like, right, like A1. Also, he baptized Jesus. What greater honor? Are you serious? He baptized Jesus. And even when Jesus came to him, he was like, oh, no, man, I ain't even worthy. Are you sure of me? I can't even untie your shoes. You sure of me? Like, John, John was did some very significant things. And so... With a resume like that, you're not expecting verse 2 on here. Oh, you could bring it back up. With a resume that he had, you're not expecting verse 2. Because verse 2, we see that John is in a, a place you don't expect him to be in. He's in prison. And John is in prison only because he spoke the truth. See, there was a king named Herod, and he had some little... Miscellane miscellaneous dealings with one of his brother's sisters and they hooked up and they divorced their people and then they got hooked up and John was like no you wrong mm -mm. can't do that and Herod got mad and threw him in jail so we have this man with this illustrious resume of ministry but we see that he's in prison John's in a, in a crazy place right now speaking the truth landed him in prison what do you do when your purpose lands you in prison? What do you do? What do you do when you're a prisoner of your doubts or your fears? What do you do when you're a prisoner of depression? What, what do you do when you land in these places? John was in jail. He's sitting there. He's done all these wonderful things. And John has questions. He's sitting there. He got time to contemplate. He's sitting in jail. He's like, wait, hold on now. I got some questions. Hey, my um, disciples, come on over here. I got Y'all give a message to Jesus, right? Look at verse 2. Verse 2 is very important because the key word in there is that when John heard in prison about the deeds of Christ. So he'd been hearing some things. Some things are in the air. Things are getting back to him about this Jesus fella that he's been hyping up. See, John was Jesus' hype man. He was like that run rap guy that don't really do nothing on stage, but just be doing this the whole time. Hey, yeah, uh, uh. Like that was, he was Jesus' hype man. So look, in, in, in Matthew 3, we read this last time. In Matthew 3, look, look what this, this illustrious speech he had about Jesus. John, went in Matthew 3, 11 to 12, no need to go there. Just take my word for it. No, just kidding. You should look for yourself. <laughs> Matthew 3, it says, this is John talking about Jesus. He said, I baptize you with water for repentance, but he who is coming after me is mightier than me, whose sandals I'm not even worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork in his hand, he will clear out the threshing floor and clear the wheat barns, and he will gather the chaff, and it will be burned with an unquenchable fire. Like, he was, like, hyping Jesus up, right? He had, like, a good speech about Jesus. And that was all basically to say that, hey, when Jesus come on the scene, it's going down. Y'all better repent. He going to separate the wheat and the chaff. It's going down. Y'all better be ready. Come on, get baptized. Right? That was his, that was his message. So G, he's, he, you know, he's doing all this, but he's in jail, and he's hearing 
things that Jesus are doing, what he's doing, and is not quite living up to his sermon that he had put out there. You, you with me? He had all this like, is Jesus coming? The Messiah, y'all better get ready. And then he hears these great, what is Jesus doing? He's, um, he's doing what now? Because I'm waiting for the winnowing fork and the, the fire to come down. And I'm not quite seeing that happen. So, yeah, what's going on there, Jesus? Um, has Jesus ever acted differently than you wanted him to? Has there, you know, have you ever had, like, really, like, high hopes about what Jesus was about to do? And it's kind of like, like a little, little flutter, little, you were expecting the heavens to part, especially when somebody you, like, mad at and you, like, ready, like, oh, God, gonna get you. <laughs> he gonna get you. Wait, just watch. You putting, you doing the color purple on him? Watch. Watch what God gonna do to you. And then they, like, get blessed with a car or something. You're like, Really? What? What? Did you see? So this is kind of where like John is. John is right at that place. Like, oh, thank you, baby. <laughs> Sophia. Thanks, Sophia. He's at this place where he's kind of wondering what, what's going on. Why isn't Jesus lining up? with my expectations of him. Why, why isn't he doing the things that I want him to do? Why he not following my curriculum? Why he not doing what I, you know, Christmas is coming. Why, why he not doing my Santa Claus list? I got a list for Jesus. Here, Jesus, I've been nice. <laughs> do my list. Why Jesus not doing what I want him to do? Verse 3 is very powerful to me, and I, I just could not get it out of my head all week. John said, hey, Jesus, are you the one who is to come, or shall we look for another? Now, just keep in mind everything John saw up to this point. He validated this dude like, you are the Messiah. It's you. I'm baptizing you. I'm doing, he heard the voice from heaven. But something about that prison place, something about that place when you're locked in. You know, John's probably like, how did I get here? You ever think about, have you ever been that place in your life? Why, how do I get, I went to college. I did my, did my degree. I did this. I did, I did everything I was supposed to do. Why am I here? Anybody had that why am I here moment? Like, where am I? So late. Like, this is not the way it was supposed to be. This is not the way I charted out my life. Those who are really charted and organized, and when God, like, goes off your grid and your script, you're like, wait, no, that was my five-year plan. It's not, that's not on here, Jesus. Um, so... Are you the one? How many times have we lived this verse? God, are you the one? Or am I, am I supposed to look for something else? Because are you the one? Are you the Messiah? You know, Messiah is the one who was to save. I mean, you need Jesus to save you out of some situations. Like, for real, if he don't come through, like, it's like you smiling in here, but you're like, for real, if Jesus don't. It's going to be bad. Are you the one? So sometimes we're like, Jesus, is it, is it you or should I? Is it, is it going to be in a job? Are you the one or should I wait for a spouse? Are you the one or should I just, you know, do other things? Is it in my job? Is it in my or work? Is it in my friends? Is it in partying? Is it in hanging out? Because I need something to save me. I need something to satisfy my soul. I need something way deep down inside. And I'm waiting on you and don't look like you doing the things like I want you to do them. So I have a question, Jesus. Are you the one or should I look for another? My God, I couldn't leave this verse alone. 
Because we all been here before. At least I have. Jesus, I'm waiting on you. But should I, am I supposed to look for other options? Because I'm your, I put all my eggs in your little basket. And I, maybe I should have had like a five-point plan uh, after that. Jesus, are you the one? And Jesus' answer is very, you know, Jesus, Jesus, no, Jesus is going to make you think. He don't say like, yes, I am, of course. <laughs> Duh, John, remember baptism, us, conversations we had? Jesus don't, just look at Jesus' response. Hey, he said, hey, Jesus answered, go tell John. This is what I want you to go. Go run, tell that. Remember that? Run, tell that. To, run, tell this to John. John, go tell John what you see and what you hear. Now, this is, this is what he said. Like, hey, go tell John what you, but I want you to check that John had already heard these things. You remember verse 2? Because it said in verse 2, when John heard in prison about the deeds of Christ, that's when he had some questions. But Jesus didn't even over, he just like ignored his question and was like, hey, go tell John what, tell him, tell him that the blind receive their sight, the lame walk, lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised up, and the poor have the good news preached to them. That was Jesus' answer. That was his answer to John. So they, you got you to understand, they thought Messiah would come one way. Like he was going to come to the Jewish people. He was going to save them from the, the Roman authorities. Sister Yolanda had an excellent sermon about that, how he's going to save them from the Roman rule. And they were looking like for like the big meal. They was like the Jewish Panthers, right? They was like ready. Like, what we, what we doing? Jesus, like, when? Just say when. They was ready for the revolution. They black robes, sandals tied. I don't know. Sorry, I'm back. All right. I went too far on that. All right. They, um, they were looking for a Messiah, but they thought he was only going to come one way. He was going to just wipe out the Roman government, and we're going to set up this establishment. Jesus is going to be king, and now we can finally show these Romans who God's people are. But, you know, they kind of left out a few verses about other promises about the Messiah. He also said that he would fulfill all these things. They're like, yeah, 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 we don't want all that stuff. We want Jesus to rule and reign, right? So in this, while we're looking at this, it's easy to look at them and be like, oh, you guys are dumb. Like, why did you guys didn't see it? But what is our Messiah complex? What are we looking for? What are you looking for? And what are, you, what are your expectations of Jesus? Ask yourself, what, are you, what is your expectations of Christianity? Because we, you know, kind of Western Christianity will have us thinking there's something that is not. Because a lot of times we're expecting houses, we're expecting cars, we're expecting a comfortable life, we're expecting health and prosperity. And that's why I came to the altar and gave my life to Jesus. Because, you know, my life was bad and I wanted better and I, I was addicted to stuff and now I don't want to be. So that's why I came to God. But, you know, people out there do the same thing. They got AA, they got NA. Like people, there's, there's help, there's counseling, there's therapy. Like people get help for those things all the time. What is your expectation of Jesus? What is your expectation? What are you looking to get out of this is what you need to ask yourself. Because the real evidence of Messiah being in your life, you want to know what the real evidence? Well, you know what, what, what it means to have Jesus in your life? Jesus said it very clearly. He said, the blind will receive your sight. How many people have had their eyes open? How many remember being blind? And you used to be ignorant to stuff. And you used to be doing all kinds. You couldn't see. And now Jesus opened your eyes. That's, that's Messiah. He, the lame walk. How many people got a different walk now? You used to walk one way. You used to go all kind of crazy places. Feet, wherever your feet led, you just took your, you just went wherever your feet led. But Jesus gave you a better walk. How many people have been cleansed from their sins? That's evidence. That's what we're supposed to be getting out of Christianity. Your sins cleanse. 
I had a young per- per- person tell me this morning, I don't know if Jesus could even do feel, forgive me of all these sins. Yes, he can. Every one of them. Every one of them. Gladly. Yes, he will. The deaf will hear. How many times you didn't hear right? You couldn't receive things. People would tell you about Jesus. You're like, I don't, I don't want to hear. But now your ears are open. That's evidence of Messiah. The dead are raised. How many people had dead things in their lives, dead places, dead dreams, dead hope, and now they're alive? That's what Christianity, having the poor preach good news to them. So that's Messiah. So they didn't want that Messiah. They, 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 they wanted some other thing that God wasn't. Look at verse 6. Verse 6 is powerful, too. I couldn't get off of verse 6. Look what Jesus told him. He said, and blessed is the one who is not offended by me. Woo, Jesus. How many times have we been offended because God didn't do what we wanted him to do? If we be in all the way 100%, like all the way 100. There are times we want God, we had it all mapped. God, if you just do it this way, if you just follow what I, look, I already got it figured out, God. If you just do X, Y, and Z, if you just talk to that person, just move that over. Hey, you could just add some money into my account. But this would all be over if you could just have somebody just give me a check. And I don't want to have to worry about any of this. We have all mapped up. Okay, God, here's my plan. Go. And he doesn't do it. And then we get offended. How come, God, God, there is there a God? Is there really a God? Does he really? I mean, look at all the starving kids. That's a, Everybody always falls back on that one. That's like default. Is there really a God? Because there were times that I prayed and he didn't answer. Anybody been there? Come on, we could be. Don't leave me up here. We've been there. Y'all gonna leave me here, raise my hand by myself. I was like, y'all didn't? Oh, me neither. No, I'm, I'm gonna be proud. Yes, I'd have. I've, I had things that I've asked for and didn't come back, and we get offended by God. They were offended because Jesus didn't do what they wanted him to do. And this is the thing I want everybody to get out of this message. Please, please, if you don't hear anything else, the saddest thing about this whole story is that they, they miss Jesus because he didn't come like they expected him to. They missed him. Understand, they missed him. He was here. He walked among them. He had every sign, fulfilled every prophecy, and they missed him. Because he didn't come like they, like they thought he should. I mean, just think about it. He came to save the world. I mean, this is the grand plan from the Garden of Eden. Like God had years to set this up. And he came as a baby? Think about it. It was the greatest heist ever. Who would have thought a baby? He came as a baby? A helpless little Teeny weeny baby, like, look at baby buddy. He came as a baby. The Lord of glory. Is that what they expected? He grew up in a shady neighborhood. Remember they say, can anything good kind of a Nazareth? I mean, come on. How can you be the Messiah coming from a shady neighborhood? I mean, he hang out with the undesirables and sinners. Jesus, you were supposed to come and... Whip everybody into shape, and you out here having dinner with Leroy and them. How's you? You know what they do, Jesus? Get over here. Don't go in their house. Jesus is in there kicking it, right? <laughs> with the sinners. That's the people he came for. Jesus over here talking to women. God, what you doing talking to women, Jesus? We don't talk to women. They lower class. We don't, they don't even hardly exist in our world. He came not the way they thought he could, that he would. He came healing people on the wrong day. How dare you, Jesus? Do you know it's Sabbath to heal nobody? I don't care if their arm is withered. They was cold, huh? <laughs> Obviously, the man's hand has been whole, and y'all still mad about it. it's the wrong day. He didn't come the way they thought he would. Think about it. Don't miss Jesus. Young people, don't miss him. 
Don't miss him. You only get one lifetime. Don't miss Jesus. See, Jesus never fit in the box people tried to put him in. He never came like they expected him to. Why? Because he doesn't conform to us. We conform to him. He doesn't conform to us. We conform to him. We want to put him in all kind of boxes. And Jesus, you do this. You be real good. You sit in this corner. You behave, Jesus. No. We don't, we don't tell Jesus how to behave. We don't direct him. We don't boss him around. Instead, we are to yield to his lordship. Trust and surrender to him. They missed him, y'all. Don't let that be the testimony of your, of your life. That you missed Jesus because he didn't come the way you thought he should. Jesus comes in all kind of ways. See, you thinking you got to get cleaned up. I got to act right. I got to make sure I'm, you know, I got to. Most people are like, I can't go to church. Church burned down if I walk in. I got to get myself together. <laughs> Biggest lie ever. Guess what? He wants you just the way he wants you all messed up all in the middle in the, in the middle of what you're doing i don't care you could be in the very act of what you're doing he still wants you right there he wants you right there don't miss him see our our prayer should be our prayer should be lord whatever you want however you want it however you want to do it whoever you want to use However you want to show up, Lord, I will trust you. See, your great expectation in God should be rooted in trust. That's where they missed it also. They had to trust that God was going to do what he said. He was sending the Messiah, but he's going to do it his way. All their responsibility was to be like, God, we trust you. I don't care how he come. If he red, blue, green, if he come in a window, through a wall, I don't know. Whatever you want to do, God, we want to, we'll, we'll be open to whatever you want. Are you open to whatever God wants to do in your life? Are you open? Can you be that open to be like, God, whatever you want to do, however you want to come, however you want to change me, however you want to use me, God, whatever you want to do, I trust you. Because I know you're coming. I know you're coming. The Messiah was coming. But you can't control God. You know, we have control issues sometimes. Anyone struggle with control issues? I'm making you raise your hand a lot. Sorry, it's a lot of confession time. Control issues, well, you know, could hinder you from the relationship God wants to have with you. Because when you come to God, you got to relinquish that control. You got to give it up. You got to release all of your demands. And it's truly a surrender to him. God, I have nothing. My plans never work. I need you. (laughs) At the end of the day, they never do. They never pan out. To really be like, God, I, I, this is now, this, you can't have both. Can't do it your way and God's way at the same time. Something has to give. Something has to give. So surrender to God's will. Surrender to his timing. When he does it and how he do it, does it is God's business. Think about that in your life. However he does it, whenever he does it, whenever he comes, it's his business. It's your job to trust that he will do what he said. Do you have that trust? See, Never limit God to just one option. Never limit God. Always be open. You don't know how God's going to come through. You don't know who he'll use to speak to you. He'll use a little baby to come up to you and give you a word and be like, Lord, Jesus, baby, what you say? You just changed my life. And they just all skipping and playing. God will use anybody, anyone, anything. But you wait, now I'm waiting on a priest to come and tell me. And we want signs and wonders and in the heaven. And sometimes, just like John, he's speaking and he's moving all the time, but we're not seeing it and we're not recognizing it. 
Jesus was doing all this work the whole time. And John was like, um, excuse me, are you still, are you the one? God is showing you. Think about your life. Think how much God has shown himself to you, if you really be honest. I know you're waiting on one thing, but if you just think on the other things that God's been doing all the way up until this time, he's been moving in your life. He's been drawing you. Young people, he's been drawing you. He's been bringing, he's been wooing you this whole time. He's been drawing you. So you're looking at the door, but he might be coming through the window. The main point is that he's coming. Always expect the unexpected with God. Always. Always expect. That's how you keep your great expectations. It's not on what you expect, but your trust in him. Your trust in God. So we're going to close. And I just want to have a time of prayer and reflection at this time. Um, we have a couple of things. We have a couple of issues we want to we want to get right with God on today, per se. If you guys um, would would just humor me on that, we gotta we gotta get some things right with God. Um, if this word has really spoken to your heart, and I believe it has, God has um, landed on some of y'all. He's spoken to some of your hearts. I'm gonna ask everyone to stand, and I just want everyone just to have a time of. Um, this just is a time of reflection. I know you might have came with somebody or you would stand around people, but just um, in just a moment of concentration and reflection, can you just close your eyes? And I just want you to think about your life. I, I'm, I got a, a few people that God wants to speak to in here. The first, the first group of people are people who need to meet the Messiah. You need to meet him. You're looking for a savior. You're looking for somebody to save you. You've tried it all, did it all, tried, and it's just, it's not satisfying your soul. You are looking for a Messiah. You, you're, you're here and you hear the word and you're like, God, I want you to save me. Save me from myself. Because guess what? God will open your eyes. He will cause you to walk where you've been paralyzed. He will cleanse you of your sins. He will open your ears. He'll raise dead things that are inside of you back to life. He'll preach good news to poor places in your life. If you're here and you're saying, you know what, I need Jesus. I, I don't even, you know, I had him before. I fell off. I don't know what happened. But if he could just take me the way I am, even in my sin, even in, um, in the midst of my thing, I don't even know what I'm doing after right now. I, don't, I, I'm just, I just need Jesus. If you could just raise your hand, just me looking. If you could just raise your hand. If you just say, hey, I'm here and I need Jesus, I see you. I need you. I need this Messiah. I need this Messiah. I mean, if you're here and you said that prayer, I mean, you said you raised your hand. I just want you to repeat after me. And everyone could join in on, on this prayer. I want you to say, dear Lord, dear Lord. I need you. I need a Messiah. I've done it all my own way, and it doesn't work, and I need you. Come into my life. Come into my heart. I surrender all to you. I give it to you, Lord. Take me. Make me what you would have me to be. I trust you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And also, if you're here and you've been offended by God because he hasn't been on your timetable, we've all been there. And you want to you use this time just to repent. You've been holding a grudge with God and you want to let it go today. If that's you, just raise your hand. God. It's no one looking. It's just you, between you and God. God, I, I've been holding some things. I've been hurt because I felt like you didn't come through. But God, today, yes. I, trust you I trust you with your timing. God, I trust you. I don't know it all, but you know it all. I don't understand why it happened. I don't, say, I don't understand why I had to go through, this, to go through that, but I trust you. Hallelujah. I declare that I trust you today. Yeah. 
God, I'm sorry for holding grudges against you. I'm sorry for being offended by you. God, I, I just want you, I just want to do it your way. If that's you, just have your time with God. Just you talk to him. God, I, 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 don't, I don't want to be offended by you anymore. And thirdly, we have people in here who are, you're waiting for God to save you. You got a situation going on. You don't know how it's going to turn out. You don't know what to do about it. But to that person, I say, will you be open to how God does it? Will you be open today? Will you make a declaration of trust to God? Will you trust him on today? If that's you, can you just raise your hand? You're waiting on God to save you. God, I need you. I got a situation. I was this beyond my control. But on today, I give it to you. Uh, my hands are lifted and showing you in a, in a visual sign that I give it up. I give it to you. I trust you with it. And I declare that I will trust you. I declare that I will trust you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He's moving in this place right now. He's speaking to your situation right now. Come on, take a time just to reflect and meditate on God. Young people, he's, he's speaking to you right now. He's been drawing you, young people. He's been drawing you. Will you give your life to him today?